Oh, I love life. Life loves me. Hey, why don't you just say that? I love life. Life loves me. Look to, your, look to one of your neighbors and look right at them and say, my, oh, my. There's so much beauty in you. There's so much love in you. There's so much power in you. There's so much joy in you. Intelligence runs all through you. And you have come to set it free to make a mighty difference on this planet and to help change the world for the better. Let's be about this together in the here and now. And so it is. Amen. Touch and agree. That's a high five. That's a handshake. It's a hug. Just touch and agree so that you're consciously aware that you're assisting in creating a holy field of integrity. Integrity. The, in being in integrity with your soul. You're creating a holy field of love and beauty and intelligence that is bringing you out of the far country. Bringing you, you're coming out from among them. You're coming out from the lower frequencies of life and establishing yourself in a high frequency and vibration of love, beauty, and intelligence that will become more real to you than the very chairs you're sitting on. This is the world that you want to begin to live in and express from diligently, consistently, with divine practice on a regular basis. Our theme for the month is your call for success. Success is defined as the activation of your potential so that you can be whole enough to allow the infinite to express through you. The difficulty with individuals understanding success is that they think the preparation for the success is the success. In other words, there are prepar preparatory steps for success that many people think is the success itself, but it's just, it's just preparation. Individuals will work on their body temple and make sure that it's healthy, it's vibrant, it's strong, become successful in that area, and that's the preparation for success. That is, allowing your body temple to be strong enough so that you can deliver your gifts. Individuals think of that in the area of relationships, that uh, being with somebody or something like that is successful. Your relation, that area of, uh, that particular area of your life, that is where you learn how to be alone without being lonely. You learn how to be with people without being needy. You learn how to forgive, love, have compassion, patience, forgiveness, and success, success in your compassionate generosity. And then that particular area becomes stable enough for the gifts of divinity to be expressed through you. Individuals think uh, when you begin to, to, to leverage the, the vibration of abundance, you begin to walk with the mantra of or the koan of uh, to he or she who is given, she or she who ha blah, 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 blah. to he or she who has more shall be given, to he or she who has not. Even that which they have shall be taken away. That is a koan that speaks to the frequency of abundance that we begin to carry so that we're able to generate the financial good and the prosperity that is necessary. But that's not success. That's the preparation for success. In the area of right livelihood, you learn right useness. And that is, you find your place in the world where you can be used by the Spirit then that area begins to be successful. In the area of entrepreneurial ship, unless you have four bottom lines in your entrepreneurial ship around your business, you're not successful yet. There must be, there must be purpose. There must be something about the people. There must be something about the planet. And there must be something about prosperity. You have to have four bottom lines to be successful in the new aspect of life, the new paradigm of living. So those particular areas of our life, sometimes people think that when you get your body together, you're successful. Or when you get a relationship, you're successful. Or when you, you get money, you're successful. Or, uh, 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 but you're, you're, that's the preparation for it. What do I mean by that? Those particular areas are areas by which the infinite presence of God can now move through you and your purpose, and you're strong enough to withstand all of the energy that wants to come through you in a mighty, mighty way. Are you picking up what I'm putting down here? 
I, I want you to pick it up. We're going to go through this all month in various, in various ways so that ultimately you understand that what the world calls a success is preparation. Because unless you're making a difference on the planet, unless you understand your meaning, which is the topic of the day, you know, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, sometimes you, I'll, listen, <laughs> I'll listen to people in interviews and they'll ask, somebody will ask a question and, and they'll say, well, you, you know what I mean, you know what I mean, what I mean is, they haven't even said anything yet. But they'll say, what I mean is, what I mean, what I mean, is, no, we don't know what you mean, you haven't said nothing, you know. <laughs> but, but that's just a throwaway line, I'm just thinking about it. Now, and so what do you mean? What do you mean is, is the topic. And so when we have our structures together, now we can begin to give meaning to life. The meaning isn't having the structures together. That's the preparation. The meaning is why you came to this planet. The meaning is the talents and gifts that you have within you being set free, but now you're strong enough to do it because you have leveraged the body temple and it's healthy. It's not going to get in your way. You've leveraged your area of relationships, friendships, and companions and companions, so you're not ego tripping, you're not needy, you're not stalkerish, you're, you're not, uh, you're not, uh, uh, have, you're not uh, uh, running away from life on the other end, uh, you know, so you've leveraged, so you can be with people, because the vision that is seeking to happen on the planet is going to come through community, that's called the second coming of the Christ, by the way. The first coming was through, was through individuals like Jesus. The second coming is through communities that can hold the octave of a higher frequency to absolutely change the world, you see? And then when you, you leveraged the abundance consciousness in a high-tech, low-touch society that's entangled in materialism, People have gotten hypnotized into thinking that having money is successful. I can tell you a lot of people that got a lot of money that ain't successful. <laughs> Unhappy, dejected, drug, overuse of drugs and everything else, totally unsuccessful life. They just got a lot of money. And so that is not success. It's preparatory. You want to be able to flow with financial good. You want to be able to have prosperity. You want to be able to flow with financial literacy. That's preparation. And then, as I stated earlier, in your ideal employment, it's about right useness. Am I, be, am, am I stepping in to be used by the Spirit? Am I spiritualizing my place of employment? It's not just a job. It's where I show up to be used by the Spirit, so I'm unleashing powers every single day that were more than the day before because I've become aware that I'm not getting paid by the person that's signing the check. I'm getting paid by God to show up for God. Not a man in the sky, but a presence that wants to know itself as our life. Again, the entrepreneurs and the business owners, the business becomes spiritualized, so you have your four bottom lines, you have people, or what you're doing helping people, you have your purpose, a higher purpose of reality, you definitely have the prosperity or your business will not sustain itself, you see. And so what is the other one? And the planet. Are you just throwing more stuff out into the, the, the fields to be de, to, 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 with pollution? Are you just messing up the planet? So you have to have those four bottom lines. Now, you step into meaning. So, so, this, so just as a baby learns to walk, and you say they're, they're crawling, oh, they're walking, oh, that's successful. And then, oh, they can run, oh, then they can do this, they can do that. And so those particular areas of our life are the ways by which we are... Becoming successful, that is, becoming a container big enough to hold the energy and the vitality of the presence of God. So you can wake up now and you can say in substance, what do I mean to the presence? What is my real meaning? 
Most people spend a lot of time on preparation, and then even if that particular area becomes prepared, they, over, they keep preparing for it. More, more, more. Not you, not here, not now. What does my life mean? And so you begin to consider that there is a destiny that's within you. There's a gift. There are talents. There are possibilities that want to be released and expressed according to your particular uniqueness. Say with me right now, I am a unique spiritual being. Look to your neighbor and say, there's no one like me. There's no one exactly like you. We are here to change the narrative of the world we're living. So once you are prepared, let me go back on that a little bit. So when you look at the areas that I've mentioned, if, there's, if you're not fully prepared there, what do you do? You serve an apprenticeship to that area. You serve an apprenticeship to that area. You take the spiritual principles and you say, I'm serving an apprenticeship to prosperity. I'm going to learn all about prosperity, well, uh, abundance. I'm going to catch the mantra of abundance and having and being until that area is leveraged and is stabilized. If it's the body temple, you serve an apprenticeship to the body temple. What what is good nutrition? What's good exercise? What's good thought about the body temple? You, you, know, you work on that area, and then when it's prepared, now you're ready to go be successful. You, you're not successful yet. That's the preparation. So now we can ask, what is the meaning? Everyone has entered into this planet. You chose to be here to change the narrative of the world. In other words, when you arrived on the planet, you ran into an imprint of the status quo that was here before you got here. And that status quo uh, had something to do perhaps with lack, limitation, scarcity, and not enoughness uh, that created a level of immature competition, created a level of not enoughness, created a level of fear, doubt, and worry that produced uh, racism and homophobia and hate and things of that particular nature based on a paradigm of not enoughness. You have arrived on this particular planet, this particular time, where the old is breaking up and the new is being born to begin to change the narrative of the world in which we are living. But you're not doing it as a weakling. You're doing it as a strong being because your structures are being stabilized because you are serving an apprenticeship to those structures until you can be strong enough to not have to think about those structures but to move into the world changing the narrative. Another way of saying that Jesus the Christ said it this way, that you must uh, uh, no longer spin and toil. Uh, you must look at the lilies of the field who are spinning and toiling and, and not having one anxious thought about anything at all. When you stabilize those structures, you don't think about them anymore. You don't wake up thinking about those structures. You wake up thinking about how you're going to change the world. Because you're strong enough in that area. Are you catching what I'm saying here? So now your life is beginning to have meaning, and you're not worried about those structures. And so now you can begin to change the narrative. What do we mean by that? Our brother Jesse Smollett had a noose around his neck a couple of days ago. People shouting all kinds of racial homophobic slurs at him, which reminds us that when you go back a little bit in time, and we're in Black History Month, it's really United States History Month, but we'll call it Black History. <laughs> but without us, America ain't what it's supposed to be. <laughs> it's, 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 you have many years of free labor, baby. <laughs> you can become number one. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, you, you, go, you, go back to, uh, you go back to the forced immigration of Africans uh, onto the continent uh, and to becoming a, a slaves, ultimately that was abolished and the emancipation, it, it, it was, that, was, that was abolished, that law was changed, but the narrative didn't change. And then you had legal lynchings. And then that was, law was changed, but the underlying narrative wasn't changed. And then you had the segregation. That became illegal. Underlying narrative didn't change. Police brutality. That's being looked at, still going on. Narrative isn't changed. The narrative is still 
at some level subhuman inferior. You can go down the line with any list of people, our gay brothers and sisters. You can go down, and, and, and so we are here to shift the narrative to what you know is true, that each and every one of us are unique expressions of infinite potential. Each and every one of us. There is no superiority, inferiority. We're all emanations of God. And so when you get your stuff together, God wants you to be prosperous. God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be able to have healthy relationships in which forgiveness and love and compassion and honesty and joy flow through those relationships. But without your neediness, you see, or, with, or without your uh, 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 disattachment, in order for you to be strong enough to go through the turbulence of our time, and to be strong enough uh, to change the narrative of what is going down on the planet. So that you, as an emanation of the Most High God, understand your meaning every day you wake up. What do you mean? So it's, you, you got to ask yourself, what do I mean? Why am I doing this? What's my motivation? Is my motivation operational and materialistic? Or is my, motivational, is my motivation to bring heaven to earth? Is my motivation to bring more joy, more harmony, more peace, more generosity, more love, more flowing of the Spirit? What does my life mean? And then we understand righteousness, which is right use-ness. Use me. I want to be used. Now, now, if you do this, now this is spiritualizing your life. You go into any situation, instead of seeing what you're going to get out of it, you walk into the situation under right use-ness. How can I be used by the Spirit in this situation? How can my gifts be activated? How can the gift within me be expressed? Now, once you do that, you've come out of operationalism and you've come out of materialism and you've spiritualized your day. Now, your great employer, which is the presence of God, can use you and gifts beyond your wildest imaginings can begin to flow through you. Something begins to happen because you're in the flow of the universal presence. You're not in your little surface mind trying to eke out your existence in the world of lack and scarcity. You are in the flow of being and having. And in the world that God sees, you're being used by that impulse of life. All of your needs become met with an ease, a grace, and a dignity. And you change the world for the better. For those of you who are new to agape, we make a distinction between the world and the planet. The planet is Mother Earth. We don't treat it too well sometimes. The planet is Mother Earth, but the world is something else. The world is a synergetic connection of beliefs, opinions, points of view, perceptions, positionalities. And that creates a world view. You read the newspaper, that's one view of the world. It's very limited and it's not real. It's just a bunch of facts thrown together happening in people and creating a world. Then that's why two people can be standing on the planet, same spot on the world, and the same spot on the planet, but be in different worlds. So we separate world and planet. You are here to change the world. You're here to change the narrative. You're here to change the narrative to. I'm living in a world of kindness and justice and love and peace and harmony and wholeness. I'm living in this world. Use me. I want to be right useness. Let the frequency of that world flow through me. So I'm spiritualizing all of my relationships, my place of employment, my business, my body temple. Use me. And the onslaught of energy that you can now synthesize. The onslaught of energy that you can now allow to flow through you will come through and won't leak. Because you're strong enough to hold it. You understand what I'm saying here? Yeah. So, so when you're out there trying to make money, you have to make money for a purpose, not just to stack it up. You see? 
you're, you're trying to get your body together. You're not just getting your body together for vanity. You're getting your body together so it doesn't get in your way because you've got gifts to give. You see? Inhale. Release. So hear this spiritual Cohen once again. To he or she who has, more shall be given. To they that have, more is given. And they reap abundance. To they who have not, even that which they have shall be taken away. It's a Cohen that says, when you have the consciousness of being and having, the consciousness of abundance, then you draw to you and you radiate from you more opportunities for abundance. If you have the consciousness of lack and scarcity, even that which you have shall be taken away. You'll lose your peace of mind over stuff. You'll lose the stuff too. And so you're walking in this frequency. And so that becomes where you live. So what does that mean? Anytime you enter into, into a business arrangement, every time you enter into a project, you're walking into it with the feeling of abundance already. You're not going to get the abundance from the project. You're walking into it with it. And then the universal presence through its law moves and shifts things around for your consciousness to manifest as right action, prosperity, and all wonderfully good things. Are you, are you getting this? Are you got, you got to catch this. That's why we're dedicating the whole month to the call of success. So, so there is a call for you to be successful. And the Spirit of God wants you to be successful. Why? Because you can be used more. You see, if you cultivate some skills, then you're more useful. If you cultivate a higher consciousness, you're more useful to what? Changing the narrative of this world. You see, changing it. Somebody's got to do it. Dr. King said, I have a dream. He was shifting the narrative to possibility of a world that works for the highest and best within us all. That was his meaning. What do you mean? Close your eyes for a moment. And imagine, first of all, imagine right now you are perfectly healthy. Just, oh my God. There's so much strength and flexibility. Ageless beauty. Timeless mind. Just, just get the feeling out. Now, now, catch the feeling of, of, of such deep and powerful self-love and appreciation and support that your relations are shot through with eternity. That's love. That's compassion. That's kindness. That's patience. That's the power of forgiveness. And just, just imagine your relations, such flow, your business relations, your intimates, your friendships. Just wow. Just imagine right now that fi your financial body is in integrity. Whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you have a place of employment, the right usefulness factor is kicked in and, 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 and this prosperity, you know, it's, it just flows. Prosperity is flowing. Opportunities are open. Doors are opening. You understand that your business has a purpose. It's a protector of the planet. It serves people. It creates prosperity for you and others. Now that all of this is together, what does your life mean? Now that all that's together already, you're not working for that anymore. What does your life mean? Why are you here? What gift did you come to give? What's supposed to come out of your mouth in terms of encouragement, inspiration, poetry, prose, song, prayer? 
What are you serving? What idea are you serving? What gift are you giving? Everything's together. Why are you here now? What do you mean? What is the meaning of your life? Let's say this out loud. What is the meaning of my life? Say it again. Say it again. Now that you've asked that question, you've placed yourself open and available through by law, by universal law, the answer is going to come to you clearly in your dreams, in what you might call coincidences, serendipity. Things are going to unfold to show you a higher meaning for your life. Some of you already know your meaning, and and you're moving right on it. Some of you have mistaken your meaning for stabilizing those other areas of your life, the preparatory stages. And so we're available now to explore meaning. are available now. Now, you can open your eyes if you want. Now, even as you are working and preparing in those other areas of life, you're serving an apprenticeship to those other structures, you can still apply meaning. Just as an individual that may be going through a holistic medical school is preparing herself She knows the meaning will be healing even as she's in preparation. So even if you're establishing a business, you can already know where you're going to serve as your business becomes successful. You don't have to wait. You already know. Are you following what I'm saying? Because we didn't just come to the planet just to get a bunch of stuff. We came to this planet to be the next stage of the evolution of humanity. Jesus, Gautama, the Buddha, were the examples of the next stage of evolution. But they didn't have all this social media. (laughs) They didn't have computers. See, we're living in a time now in which the global mind has been established. That's why we can love stream. That's how you can talk to somebody in China on your computer instantly. We already have the global mind. You've come to establish the global heart. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. To make those connections. Because the global mind without the global heart is disastrous, baby. That's why you have haters on the internet. And it's become a hatersphere. You have come to change the narrative and allow the global heart to emerge. You see, love is stronger than hate. Love is stronger than hate. And you are the ones that are going to make that difference. You might as well claim and say, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make a mighty difference. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be healthy. I'm going to have some good friendships. And I'm going to make a mighty difference on this planet. And it's happening right now. That's the way it is. Somebody scream about it. In breathe here. Release. In breathe. Release. In breathe. Breath. Suspend right there. Once again, feel that all of your needs are met. Don't let the surface mind take over right now. Feel your needs are met. Feel you are supremely loved by the presence that's never an absence. Feel the strength of your mental, emotional, and physical temple. Release. Just feel that. 
Because when you cross the great divide and you're looking back at your life, you don't want to have your, your higher self look at you and say, you got some explaining to do. <laughs> you said when you were going what you were going to do and you got all caught up in the turbulence and this and that. and uh, You forgot. No. This community is here to help you remember <laughs> why you took the incarnation in the first place. <laughs> and breathe. Release. That was a lot. I think that's all for today. I think that's it. I think that's it. I think it's a lot. There's a lot there. There's a lot there. That's all. That's it. That's it. We got our marching orders. We got our marching orders. Yes, we do. We got them. We got them. We're going to explore success all month. We're going to get deeper into prosperity, deeper into health, deeper into relationships. We're going to explore success, but from the meta understanding of it, not from the worldly point of view. So that you can have all your needs met and have tremendous meaning in this world. Oh, I'm so happy. We turn within. Let's turn within right now. Let's, let's feel it. Let's feel it. Let's feel it. As established men and women in God, established men and women in intelligence and in love and in beauty and in life itself, you have the power to choose. In this moment, I want you to choose to be grateful. Use it properly. Use your, use your choice ability properly. Choose to be grateful. If you've been languishing in victimhood and bemoaning your fate about what others have done to you or said about you or assigning blame to them as to why you're not happy, stop it! Don't give anybody that much power. Come to yourself right now and be grateful. Be thankful and be appreciative of life. This is a new starting point for your life today. Every time we go into prayer, every time we go into meditation, every time we come to this celebratory community, we are resetting and having the trajectory of our life be about the unfolding of our real destiny. Starts with gratitude. Be grateful. Say, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that all of my needs are met. I'm so grateful that I am divinely loved. I'm so grateful that I'm so healthy. I'm so grateful that I'm so wealthy. I'm so grateful that I get to serve the emerging paradigm. It is in this consciousness of gratitude and thanksgiving and pure appreciation that we recognize the presence that's back of everything. That which is visible emerges from the invisible. That which is seen emerges from the unseen. We turn within in this moment and we begin to see the invisible and hear the inaudible. And we see and we hear, oh, so much good is happening. We recognize it. And we become so at one with it, oh my God, so at one with it, even the addictions fall away. The temporary highs we get from the exogenous, from the external, oh, we don't need them no more. Because we got the light within us, the bright light, and all we need is what we've already been given. The light and the love and the beauty and the joy, the power of God Almighty, all beauty and all joy, the life force which is our source. And as we're unified with this presence, the word that is being spoken, it's, a, it's called the word, it's a frequency, it's a vibration, it's a motion of energy. And I am privileged to speak this word for each of us, unique, distinct, individualized expressions of the one God, whether we're right here in the room, whether we're live streaming from anywhere on the planet, we're all here in God consciousness. We transcend space and time. We're all here right now together. And in this unity of community that grants us immunity from the absolute nothingness of separation, the word is spoken that we may be free today 
that we may be free and liberated to be absolutely in joy because joy is the evidence of God. Bliss and ecstasy, beauty. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, omnipresent. Oh, omniscient. Oh, omnipotent. Oh, I'm the active. Oh, 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 oh! We feel it in our bones. Every organ action functions of the body, temple, the mental body, emotional body, clear! Financial body, clear! No viruses of the mind, clear! Oh, you got to accept it. As many as accept it. The conscious sons and daughters of the Most High say, I accept more good than I can imagine. I accept more peace than I've ever experienced. I accept more abundance than I've ever experienced. And it's happening right now. This is the word that's being spoken. I speak it for each of us that we may be free today infinite spirit we bow to the presence of God within our own soul and we set it free oh this I want you to just have a, a moment of feeling tone just the feeling tone of this Mary Ann and just give us a, a slight feeling tone you to take the hand of the being next to you and feel the potency of spiritual community. We've wiped away the tension of the surface mind and are embra doing a deep dive into our real nature and being, which is undisturbed by what's happening on the surface. We're oceanic beings with a depth that is infinite. We go deep within ourselves and become such a powerful, dynamic vortex of prayer that the declaration and the decrees and the announcements that are made are instantaneous in terms of healing and wholeness. 